Hi everyone, it's me, Jazzy Mac, and today our opportunity is going to be for Delta. Now, Delta is going to have work from home opportunities, and we're going to talk about some opportunities for those of you that want to travel. Yes, this is going to be perfect for those of you that say, Jazzy, I don't have a bunch of experience. Can I still qualify for these jobs? And the answer is 100% yes. In addition to that, we're also going to talk about the salary and we will get into the resume demonstration. Um, and if we have time, we will also talk about some interview questions because I want you to be fully, fully prepared when you apply for these jobs. So let's look at our very first opportunity. Oh, and I did want to mention when you work for Delta, it is just amazing because not only do you fly free, your parents fly free, your spouse flies free, and I think your kids might also fly free. I can't remember, uh, but I did have a family member that worked for Delta and Jazzy flew all over the place, okay? Just putting that out there. So our first job is going to be the Elite Service Associate Remote. Notice this does say domestic locations only. So um, what that generally means is you have to sit in like the 48 like connected states. Um, so I'm not sure if you like live in Hawaii or Alaska, if you necessarily qualify for this, but again, please ignore this location. This is probably something that, um, the job poster may have, um, entered incorrectly or forgot to take out, but this is a remote role and the domestic locations are going to be for the States. So as an elite services associate, you're going to join a service focused team focused on listening to, caring for, and connecting with customers in our Diamond Elite agency. So these are customers, I think to be like a Diamond Elite, it's like you have to spend, I can't remember, I don't remember. I don't know if it's like spending a hundred thousand dollars per year on flights or something, but it is like an insane amount of like money that you would have to spend to be a diamond elite customer. Um, for Delta airlines. So this is a full-time position and you do get to work from home and it is an 11 week paid virtual training. Um, and it pays $15 per hour. Yes, it comes with benefits, holidays, vacation time off. And you also get like the profit sharing bonus. Um, it's like every quarter you get like, if Delta makes money, they give you an extra bonus. And when my family member did it, their bonuses were never less than 5,000 per quarter. Sometimes they would get up to 20,000 per quarter. Of course, depending on uh, your, your rank and um, the amount of profit that the company has made. That's just an example. So it says that the elite services associate is going to connect with customers via phone and create an experience where customers know they have been heard, understood, valued, and important. So they want you to have good listening skills. They want you to make quality decisions and just be a good communicator, right? Now, this position is going to basically start in February and the new hire training is going to run from Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5 p.m. Central Time starting February 27th. So make sure that you apply for this ASAP because you have to keep in mind you have to reserve time to go through the background check. You're also going to have to do fingerprints um, and then, of course, your regular like going through the interview loop. So you don't want to wait a week to apply for this job because trust me, they're probably going to close out this requisition very quickly because this is a very soon approaching start date. Um, and they're saying all they really want you to have um, is a high school diploma, you know, be 18 years of age, be willing to work full time, um, and have um, an internet connection speed of 10 mega megabytes per second, okay? Be able to pass the background check and a drug test um, and inverse diver embrace diverse people and make safety and security the priority, okay? So these are all of the things that they're offering or that they want you to have. Um, and it says what gives you a competitive edge is one year of working experience and customer service. Now, I do want to 
emphasize if you don't have that, it's okay because again, they offer you 11 weeks of paid training. Okay. So I'm going to break down the resume um, at this point and we will uh, talk about what that ultimately looks like. Now, this is this is a uh, generic resume for those of you that have the resume subscription that have the ultimate resume. This is already in your library. I have already uploaded this so you can go ahead and apply. Um, I will put the direct link to the job in here for you. OK, so you always get that competitive advantage because I always I put it in your library first before I do the YouTube videos. So. We always want to put in our professional summary that we're excited to work and, you know, we've got experience in telephone, email, virtual customer service, whatever fits you. Uh, but please don't lie about your resume. Don't lie about your experience. Be truthful. OK, um, and you're excited to join the Delta Elite Services team. The reason why I put this little line that says flexible to work varied schedules, including nights, weekends and holidays is because that gives you a competitive edge. Now, if you can't do that. If you can only work Monday through Friday, then obviously don't put that line. But I guarantee you this is going to be the line um, that gets people uh, callbacks and gets you considered. OK, so let's say you do have some customer service experience. You want to put the normal things like, you know, customer support inbound support, because that was definitely a hot word. Um, escalations is going to also be a hot word when we're talking about any sort of, you know, customer support roles or um, as they call it, elite services um, role. And you may want to call out any type of experience you have with like getting customer service satisfaction surveys. Um, that would be another hot word I put in there, um, you know, tackling customer issues or account management. That's also going to be another hot word. Um, for those of you that say, well, Jazzy, I've never worked in technical support. I've never worked in a call center. Okay, no problem. Um, you can still put any other type of customer experience, whether it is working for McDonald's. If you worked at McDonald's, you've interacted with hundreds of customers a day. You've es you've worked with de-escalating situations. You know, you've had to work with customers that might've had issues with transactions or, you know, issues with their food. Those are all very relevant things that you can put into your resume. If you worked at Walmart as a greeter, that is something that involves heavy customer interaction. Again, this goes with the elite services team requirements uh, where they're saying just have a year of customer service to get that competitive edge. If you didn't have that, again, they still train you. So this is just in general, how I would structure a resume. Um, of course, if you're going to use this template, get rid of this um, logo here. That is not necessary. That's for demo purposes only. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and hop into the other role. Now, again, this role that we just went over is going to be for those of you that want to work from home. The other one that we're going to talk about is going to be for those of you that like to travel. So let's talk about this next role because I'm excited about this because my cousin just became a flight attendant and I'm excited for her. So those of you that want to be a flight attendant, Delta is hiring. Now, this does show that it's in Georgia, but please go back to the career website and look for your state. Um, generally, you don't have to live in a particular state um, to qualify. It's just going to be a matter of them wanting to make sure that you can actually show up to the training because flight attendant training is on site. No, you cannot do it online. No, you cannot do it if you have another job. Um, like, please use common sense about this type of role. You will fly to an actual training location. Um, and then after you, you know, do like the basic trainings or whatever, the safety trainings and all that, you will actually be shadowing people on actual flights as you go through that training. So you'll sometimes be with like a group or some type of cohort, cohort of five to six other flight attendee 
uh, flight attendants in training and, you know, you'll go from here to Los Angeles or from here to Miami um, and you'll be under the the training of like a, a flight supervisor. So our ideal candidate is someone that is safety and customer centric, um, that loves to be on the go and loves to help others. You should be excited about solving problems and going the extra mile to leave our customers with a positive experience. What you need to know um, is basically your new hire training is going to be six weeks long in Atlanta. Okay. During this time, you'll receive a training wage and meals, and you'll also receive lodging for those that do not live within two hours from the training facility. So they will put you in a hotel. Um, they will pay for your flight to the headquarters in Atlanta. Um, they pay for all of your meals. It's the six weeks of training, here in Atlanta. And then, like I said before, you would be on the actual flights. So you can go anywhere to Atlanta, Boston, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, New York, San Fran, Salt Lake City, the list goes on. So you're going to, of course, you know, serve customers, answer questions, administer emergency procedures, um, respond to directions uh, for passengers in the event of an emergency, that type of stuff. Um, you do have to be at least 21 for this, have a high school diploma, be able to complete a Department of Transportation drug test and background check. OK, um, I think you also have to do fingerprints for this one as well. Again, you do not want to wait to apply for this because the background check, the fingerprints, all that stuff is going to take a few weeks. So please do not like just be hesitant to apply for this. Okay. Even if you don't have experience again, they train you. Okay. You want to have the flexibility to do these domestic routes. Um, you know, you, you can't be that person that says I can only go from Atlanta to Miami. You're going to have to be able to go everywhere else. Um, and they also say, have your year of experience and a high school diploma or GED. Most people don't have flight attendant experience. If you've never been a flight attendant, and they know that. So don't let that, you know, freak you out or anything. Um, but let's talk about the resume breakdown for that particular job. Oh, and super quick for the flight attendant role. Now, Glassdoor did have on there that the flight attendants start off um, somewhere around the $50,000 a year range, but it goes into the six figure range. Of course, this is going to depend on your experience. Um, this is also going to, you know, depend on where you travel, whether it's domestically or internationally um, and your rank. So yeah, 50,000 ish up to six figures then sound pretty bad for somebody that gets a lifetime of free flights, um, you know, and all the other perks that come with this. So let's look at this. You say, Jazzy, I'm not a flight attendant. What should I put on my resume? Well, if I were going to go and apply for a job training or any type of flight attendant stuff, I would want to make sure that I've got first aid, CPR, if you've ever done that. A lot of you have done safety training for jobs like, you know, it could have been Walmart. It could have been some office job. Usually every job sends you through some type of safety training. Okay. So the reason why I'm calling out first aid and CPR is because those are things that just make you look really good to the hiring manager in case you ever had to like administer that stuff on the flight. If you don't, I think I do want to say that first aid and CPR is a part of Delsa's um, new hire training. Um, and that they'll send you to get the certification. So if you don't have it, I wouldn't think that that is a big deal. But let's say, you know, you work as a, a Walmart greeter. How do you translate that experience into one that, you know, would fit in with someone that wants to be a flight attendant? Well, greeting incoming customers is obviously something that you would do as a flight attendant. Being able to manage and resolve customer situations. Um, especially during like, you know, onboarding or, you know, during the flight, things like that. So if you were ever a greeter at Walmart, you know, and you did stuff like that, it's something you want to call out. Um, being able to perform safety conscious behaviors around customers. Those are other hot words that we saw in the job description. Um, and this could be, you know, if you notice an elderly, elderly customer is like, 
having some trouble walking, maybe you want to ask them, do they want to use the little scooter? Or maybe, you know, you can ask them, do they want um, assistance with, you know, shopping for an item? You don't want to watch them struggling throughout the store because they could slip and fall. And that's a lawsuit for the company. Um, Other things. Now, here's another hot word, um, performing pre-flight style inspections of the store. Um, according to safety trainings and OSHA requirements, okay? Um, So those are just some of the things that you as a regular Walmart greeter could call out that easily translates into someone that is probably a perfect fit as a flight attendant, right? So now let's take a quick peek at some of the interview questions Delta interview questions. Again, this is already in your library if you have the resume, um, the ultimate resume subscription. So some of the questions that they might ask you are, have you ever flown with Delta Airlines? Okay, it's okay if you haven't, you know, if you haven't, you can simply say, no, I haven't, but I just hear so many great things about Delta and I'm excited to fly with them. I hear that they're the safest airline. Um, I hear that they've got the best customer service. Um, If they say which airline is your favorite, you better not say anybody else other than Delta Airlines. (laughs) Um, Because, you know, obviously that's the airline that you're applying for. So don't say, oh, Southwest is my favorite. You know, just go... Well, I I don't have a favorite, but from what I've been reading, Delta Airlines is like, they seem to be the most reliable. They seem to have the best record for um, on-time departures. So I would definitely have to put Delta at the top of my list. Um, They may ask you, what qualifications do you have that other applicants do not? You could say, well, honestly, I'm not aware of what the other applicants possess, but what I can say is that I've done my research on Delta. I know that Delta is a premium airline. I know that Delta has a premium client base, and I am someone that has worked with you know, premium clients before. I'm familiar with that. Or you could say, well, I am someone that is just very customer centric. You know, I was a caretaker, um, you know, in a nursing home. I am someone that loves talking to people. I love assisting people. I am, you know, the queen of de-escalating situations and smoothing things out. So I know that that is not something that everyone possesses, but it's something that I personally am very proud of. Um, Who's the CEO of Delta Airlines? Big Ed. Okay. Um, Ed is the uh, CEO of Delta Airlines. And, you know, I personally, this is jazzy talking. I get emails um, about stuff from Ed all of the freaking time. Um, Seems like a nice guy. I never met him, but um, seems to be highly respected. Um, What airport is the busiest airport in the world? Okay. This will show them that you've really done some research. Uh, Atlanta's airport, where where the Delta headquarters is located, is the busiest airport in the world. Okay, Jackson Hartsfield is the name of that airport. Um, what would you do if you noticed the customer had their seat reclined prior to departure? That is a huge safety no-no. The pilot is technically not supposed to leave the ground unless all of the seats are in the upright position. So I would politely tell that customer that it is against safety regulations to be reclined during departure. And I politely ask them to raise their seat to the upright position until we get in the air and then they can, you know, sit back and chill out. Okay. So how would you handle a a scenario where a child is kicking the seat in front of them? And then, you know, there's always a tell me about yourself question. So I put some, you know, sample answers in this document um, in you guys' library um, and also questions to ask the hiring manager to be memorable. Okay. Um, You know, what's one thing that you love about the company and its leadership under Ed? Um, If budget was no issue, what sort of training would you send your team members through? What challenges do new hires generally experience during the first 90 days in this role? Those are the questions that make you memorable. Okay. Those are the questions that get you hired. When you're asking those questions, they say, oh, this is a person that isn't just here for the money. They're actually wanting to make a difference. So that is going to do it for this particular role. Again, please do not wait to apply for these jobs. Okay. Let me know if you have questions, but until the next time, good luck on your interviews and I will see you all in the next video.
Bye.